The Court of Public Opinion is a part of the Amateur Radio Network. Thank you for listening to the Court of Public Opinion, and we're taking a real careful observation of both the left and the right censorship. We're going to look at some do's and don'ts both the left and the right, alt-right, alt-left are doing. It's, it is it is important that we discuss it. It's going to be very hard to tackle both, but we're going to have to point out some obvious things from our observation after this. Planet Radio is a part I of the I think it's fair to say Radio that both Network. criticism can be pointed out for both the right left the left alt left alt right there's a lot of criticism I think it goes down to content as a researcher investigator information or somebody wants to report you can take the instructions of a veteran journalist and you can see what made them better at journalism if we ever try to do anything is emphasize on responsible journalism and one of the takeaways from these observation is it goes back to content it comes down to this, doing your own homework and research. People who do their own homework and research are going to be more concise. They're going to really identify the problems and offer solutions. One of the problems we found is continually happening in both the left and right media, alt-right and alt-left, is they're just swirling all these topics. Some of it could be gaslit. Some of it could be sensationalized. And this comes back to Journalism 101, some basic rules that have already been broken. And it's unfair because I look at what has been going on with journalism. It's evolved in different directions because you got new media, social media, and we could actually really be th at risk of losing that media privileges altogether because I do believe our freedoms are pri privileges and freedoms we don't want to use or abuse. And I think both the left and right are careful in how to operate and maybe sometimes word if it were operating from a place of defeat instead of wording it and language we use because it's kind of generaliz generalized and I think that's one of the things that you see in the PC culture is that they don't want to be politically correct but we have to be a responsible responsible journalism is probably the big identifier here than it's ever been about PC we want to use our language and correct our punctuation but when you got a generation that's people of texting and they're blowing up their feed and I we've all done this we blew up our notifications and then people are unfriending us because we became one of those people that exploited the media that in which we were given we have some privileges here you don't want don't want to lose them but blowing up your notifications you're going to lose friends right so we're taking some lessons from our own bad behavior we've made some missteps and this is what puts us in, in this exodus mode. We're like, okay, I just blew up the feed. I'm probably going to lose a bunch of subscribers because I really have been impartial. And I think when you start identifying that it comes down to content and responsible journalism, you can still bring people on the left and you can still bring people on the right and you're about the content. The reason I think what is imperative to take away from this, from our observation, is we've made these mistakes. Everyone has, because that's how the system fixes itself. But what we don't want to see is them all together take censorship from us and take it and then give it over to the left. Because what happens is the reason why the left is being favored in this, because they are attempting to do this. Not that the right isn't, but we're going to get to that in a moment. You're listening to Radio Theater at the Moonlight Lounge on Planet Radio. So we're going to talk about this because I think unf it's unfair because I think what's happening is the alt-right is being accused of this, but there are some things they got to fix in the system in the alt-right <laughs> categories. We don't want to be attack dogs, but I think these topics are worth tackling. And from our observation, we don't want to be unfair, unjust, and criminalized for 
putting out wrong content. This is why you got to get your facts straight. And you want to make sure that if you have somebody that is like kind of doing your filter for you, then you're really fortunate. Then you got to be very careful how you report it. The more concise you are, the better or articulate the topic, the better you are as a journalist. And if you put yourself in that seat and you have a microphone, you have to follow kind of the rules of journalism. And I think the left and right, alt-right and alt-left are both all all groups in between are responsible for creating this monstrosity. And I kind of take away from the censorship and I think to myself, I don't monetize my pages because I look at it as, as a student project. If we are looking at as an amateur, I'm thinking to myself, who's the student and who's the teacher? Well, hopefully we can teach each other where we're making our mistakes. I can see it's from observation, making overgeneralizations is unfair and it groups people and then you get into this back and forth and that becomes a left right issue when it's really about content and responsible journalism going back to principles and journalism when the journalist becomes the story you lose your subscribers it just goes that direction these changes happen in the system and it's through experience and education that we observe these topics because i realized that this is the problem that young journalists might learn to overcome. No, you don't want to destroy your credibility, especially if you're a credible person who has credible reports. That's what matters. But in order to sell yourself as responsible journalism, you have to create a subscription of people who want to hear the stuff you're talking about. And it comes down to content. You can't listen to other people's reports and just borrow it, or you can make sure you credit the people you report it from. These credit is just like reference pages. When you're doing a report, you have to footnote it and also put courtesy of this. If I'm using NBC's report, I gotta put the courtesy credit this report. The reporter gets the credit, not me. And this is called being considerate the reporters who are doing the actual reporting, not taking claim, not copywriting their information. I'm learning over time about copyright. I do know that we ha it's a stretch to start taking all those rights away, but here's the problem. When we can correct it, we're actually minimizing the damage, and it comes down to journalism. Responsible journalism, yes. What's responsible is giving those credits where it's necessary, knowing that this is where somebody has identified the reporter and crediting them by courtesy and photos. It works that way. This is not PC. This is just responsible journalism. This is the principles in journalism because you're competing in an arena where people on the right are kind of being marginalized, not because of their religious issues as much as it's about content. And I think there's a lot of people that are screaming in this independent media. They're saying, you're taking my content and you're using it and you're not crediting or you're not in a network. I created the amateur radio network because anyone professional or amateur is invited in to help each other in this network. Here's what's happening. And so you've got veteran journalists that have credited, have the rewards, awards, and have earned it. And in order to award somebody that credit accreditation or kind of the props, you got to credit the reporters, the actual people have done the work. And a, one of the identifiers is when people have ability to be funded. I believe in publicly funding amateur media. Why do I do that? Because I realize that we're on this learning curve in a way. So we have some barriers, if you will. We give ourselves room to be students. And we also are learning how to better improve as a reporter or a journalist. I give myself that kind of liability claim, if you will. The reason we do is because we're also trying to support ourselves at the same time. So when I have a Venmo account and I have a Pen PayPal account or a GoFundMe account, I'm asking for public support. If I want to be on radio, I have to be publicly supported or I'm going to end up having advertisers pick up the cost. The public wants independent media, but you have to be the ones to pick up the cost. And the problem is that people get into this back and forth with advertisers and advertisers pay for certain spots. It's normal. Advertisers are not going to just generally, um, they want control of where their information's going. So 
it goes back to what's going on. It's not necessarily censorship. It's professional people making professional decisions. They want their media going to something else. So what happens is people are being silenced because they're kind of what they call, and I don't want to say media freeloading is my new name for it. They're freeloading off a system that's already been working. The problem is, is that YouTube needs to have a joint agreement with independent media. And so does these other organized groups, which they call themselves mainstream, or they might call themselves cable news. There are rules that are changing, whether we like it or not. And there are people that are in the old media, the dinosaur media, as they will, <laughs> or the new media, which they call them, the, well, I don't know, maybe postmodern generation of media. But the thing is, you can't exclude it because the thing is, it comes down to someone is being marginalized. And this is where it gets into language that's kind of murky. I only did this because this is language you need to know. You're a student or you're learning like myself. I'm not a reporter, but I'm listening and I'm observing and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, this is why PC has created this, has been created into this monstrosity when it comes down to responsible reporting and responsible journalism. Some people call you grammar Nazis. Okay, let's go there. I think we've all made this incorrection, not by accident, not on purpose, but it does kind of happen. And it's because of this critic critique of others. It comes down to criticism. If you are open to reporting an opinion piece, you're going to get criticism. And they always say, watch what your opinions are. And we're at the court of public opinion. We can sit here and say that. I carefully use the word observation, not opinion, by the way. Pointing out the fact that if you share your opinion, you're probably going to lose some friends. The court of public opinion is like this group think tank, if you will. I invite you into the amateur side of it because that's where we are. And it gives us a way out and an exit, of course. Uh, I, I'm concerned... I don't want to throw anyone under the bus because I think it's unfair because there are people that are learning how to do this. They invite some of it for themselves. When you no longer report responsibly, which I think we can all say we've made that mistake, and you kind of lose this kind of twist and spin on it, we're creating an audience where you can have content and still have, I want to say carefully, observation, not opinion, while we call ourselves the court of public opinion. It is because of observation that we give you this summary. The point to all this is that I'm looking at new language and I'm saying to myself, I've not used the word moat before. That sounds like a boat. So what is a moat? I heard Obama say moat. I'm like, this isn't language I use. This is like kind of stuff that came around in the Bible. But if I'm going to talk about these topics, I realize it's going to provoke a reaction. If I'm going to provoke a reaction, I don't have to sensationalize or gaslight it. It goes back to Journalism 101. Responsible journalists are looking at this and they're saying, I'm running as far away from them as possible because you can't get these people to agree. You're not. On religion and politics, they say stay away from those topics for a reason. Because they can light themselves up a fire. And in America, where we're at this breaking point, I don't agree with the politics either. I don't find myself really on the right or the left. I kind of have a mix of all of it. I was kind of what they call cross-trained. I'm going to go down that road here shortly in a minute. As we wrap it up, because I think the crux of the matter comes down to responsible journalism, not PC not left, not right, not alt-right, not alt-left. It doesn't have to come down to censorship. But I don't monetize my site. So I'm not going to have any advertiser advertise on my page unless we are completely publicly supported. Now, are we going to be censored on our live feed? Probably, because there are new censorship rules that are happening. And that's when you get into independent group policies and things like that. And then you get down this hairy road. A lot of people did not sign up for YouTube, Facebook, Twitter to be censored. And I think that's where Facebook, Twitter has to mediate with their subscribers. If they're going to change their policy, they should give them a way out. They did not sign up for this. And to be fair, because that's where they call mediation to begin with. And in summary, 
you're not going to have fair media anymore looking at what's going on because the advertisers are looking for a different type of I mean, media that they want to get different numbers. Their target market's different. So they're changing their market strategy and the alt-right is being censored in the process and not necessarily censored, but me basically this is where they got their uh, money and how I would go about it. Here's the answers and solutions to that. If you want to be on the alt-right or independent media or new media, you put yourself up an account on your own page where you can have people publicly support you in public radio, public news, and you can put yourself out there as an independent host. And you could put yourself in this category where you not so much fall in line with political right and left, but you're just an independent reporter. And then, of course, you can put the credits and information below. But being publicly supported is far better than advertising yourself. It creates that different environment where people are forced to give you money. This is not that. I created this because I, I put all my information below. If you support me, you support me. If you don't, you don't. I'm not monetized. So that is at the free will of the people that listen to my posts. I do need people to help me. So I'm going to obviously state that in my reports. I need your support. I got 72 hours where I have to come up with $2,000. So I'm asking my supporters, those people that take the time to listen or really care about what I'm talking about to support me. But do you have to? No. Do you want to listen? Great. I'm happy. I did not create radio pages like this to be supported by my subscribers, but I'm in a position now I have to start asking. As an independent host, I want people to come to my page, not because they have to or want to, but I am creating a membership page called Amateur Radio Network because we are students and we are trying to survive and pay our bills and keep a roof over our head. It's irresponsible for me to tell you that I can do these reports and not ask for help. I need my advertising rights, so I don't want to lose that right to report either. But I have not monetized my pages. I don't know how to, but I do know this. I have a Vimo page, and I have a GoFundMe page, and I need your help, so I'll put that in the description box below. But do I like when people advertise and, 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 and spend all their time fundraising? Well, that's the option they can take. I think what happens is it kind of marginalizes people, and that's not why we put our reports up. I do know that there's a time we have to fundraise, and this is that spring fundraising season where we have to fundraise. Unfortunately, nothing happens in, out of the thin air, although I hope so. I'm looking, but it could happen on air. <laughs> It comes back to this. I think the focus has been on the monetary sites and really the principle behind journalism and responsible journalism is you have to be able to keep your subscribers and keep them happy. Or people go for other people's posts or news and they can subscribe to who they decide to subscribe to. But I think one of the things that a lot of people were arguing whether Alex Jones pulled that story or not, it wasn't that he took back control of that story and went a different direction with it. And I think that's what you have to do is make an editorial decision. I am completely behind that because I think some people who are in the independent alt media are finding themselves like, okay, I'm not distancing myself from Pizzagate, but it is a hard topic to cover and it's the hardest one to confront. So I think you should be able to give yourself room. It's too hard to cover a topic like that and not be able to splinter off because that's what real journalism is about and responsible journalism is to not just be focused on one thing. Although there are some people that is their strength. So that's like I said, it regulates itself. And that's the whole point to what we, we've been talking about as we change into the cross-training segment of this because as we wrap up the Court of Public Opinion, I must include you guys that this is an observation and it's a student's it, it, it's from a student's perspective if we're going to learn how to do this right we're going to make mistakes that's why i offer the amateur radio network and you subscribe by helping us fund it and we 
are going to help you in other ways, hopefully. But that's not really the guarantee. We want to be able to keep ourselves self-supported, publicly funded. And because we discussed some other things, one of the things I do is I, I work on a couple of charity uh, things that I've created, not other people's stuff. I created these charities, and I've been very successful. And one of the successes about creating charity for my nephew who was paralyzed, I've never done it before. So it goes back to I'm happy that I've been successful at it. I don't know. It's my strong point. But I had to create charities because I realized that one of the things is that they're not things that I have like an identifier. And when we raise money, it's part of like this, the, the non-profit end. We have to fund our profit end, but we also have to fund other uh, projects. So I call it project recovery. And one of the things I did here in, is raise money for my nephew. I did not ever, I will not take credit for that because that was a group effort that's called crowdfunding for a reason but having been kind of the project manager if you will it's a hard thing to do okay it's very hard because for a couple reasons I was being very much exposed to all the problems that came with it we were in the midst of a family crisis and we had to act quickly we were it was that out of hand right away and that was over a year ago Looking back, do I ever want to fundraise? Not really, but I know the use of fundraising. That's why we're going to keep doing fundraising projects, not these long-term things. But one of the things I wanted to talk about is cross-training, is that this was one of the images we used to stand with Jordan, and it was last year, and it wasn't very successful because you get burned out. And I think what happens is people have been asked so much of people to give their money and what happens is they go through a burnout they're tired of people asking for money so that's I think the option has always been referred to as you have the right to say no uh, there is a certain level of burnout but we got to stay operational okay so please help us please we need their help we got to we only have 72 hours to do the spring fundraising so please act quickly and go to the bottom in the description page below because I'm going to lose my home over it, and I don't want to end up there. Uh, although a lot of people say, no, you're not going to lose your home. It's very much possible I could. So I'm asking you for to reach out to us because I think our reach is small enough, but we can support each other. I want to keep this fund open because I want to help my other audience members by doing more projects and surprises and be able to offer that back so there are some things that I want to kick back out to the audience and I think those win back programs are important so we're going to win our customers and our audience and you guys back and we try to offer you the best platform possible I know we might not please everybody but we have a very small audience and one of the things I hope we get to do is more and t-shirts and giveaway programs and things like that because that way we reward our audience with things and benefits and small packages maybe maybe it's not a big deal but I want to acknowledge and recognize my audience who does stick by me who doesn't kick me to the curb who doesn't want to chuck me off as just the next uh, 15 minutes of fame I want to keep a long-standing relationship with my audience and I want to create an environment there is rewards and a reward program for doing hard work and I create this content but I like hearing your content I like receiving your ideas so I want a reward program for my audience that reward program comes in benefits it might be just small little gifts I don't know what that looks like but I want to have a reward program instead of just giving out gifts because I simply can't afford that I have to have a budget first and I'm asking for your support because I know that reward program goes back to the audience. The reward is that your participation helps me keep this thing going. We have a good thing. We don't want to ruin it and that's what it comes down to. So while I look at the seesaw of information, I recognize the system is changing. We got to be able to acclimate to some of those changes without completely destroying our privilege to have a post if I monetize my page I have to monetize my page but I want to be able to create an environment now because now that I'm going the direction of being monetized possibly I'm not sure yet I haven't decided yet 
but most of my independent posts are not monetized. That means I'm independent of that. I can have personal beliefs. And, but in the structure of responsible journalism, uh, that's where it gets kind of tricky. <laughs> if I'm a paid employee, I'm going to have to follow the rules. And at YouTube, if I want to be a paid uh, monetized site, I have to be able to put myself in that position. Or they're just going to completely black me out and I'll be in that blacklist with the rest of you who've been ousted and blacklisted and I'm trying not to go there. Although it's tempting, I don't want us to lose our privileges altogether. And I think what you see with Alex Jones, the court of public opinion is a part of the amateur radio network.